Hello everyone, welcome again to another episode of On Track Whiteboard series. My name is David Morakshi, a senior technical marketing engineer with Altium, and today we'd like to go over version control systems. What it is, its benefits, the importance of using version control in a proper way, and some best practices. Briefly, version control allows you to manage changes over time. It is most commonly used to track revisions of your project's assets, be it a source code, document, schematic, libraries, or PCB. You make a mistake, no problem. Just revert back to your previous revision. So version control system offers three main capabilities. The first one is concurrent work. It enables multiple people to work simultaneously on a single project. Each person can edit his or her own copy of the files and then choose when to share those changes with the rest of the team. And the great thing is, any temporary or partial edits by one designer do not interfere with another designer's work. The second capability is integration of work. Not only does version control system enables multiple people to work on a single project, it also can integrate that work done simultaneously by different team members. In most cases, uh, edits to different files or sometimes even the same file can be combined without losing any work. There are of course cases where two people make conflicts in edits to the same file, which has to be resolved, as we'll see in a bit. The third main capability is history and backup. Uh, the third is really a main one. It's uh, it, version control gives you access to historical versions of your project. This is essentially an insurance against all the wrong things that can go wrong with a computer, such as crashes or data losses. For any part of a file, you can always determine when, why, and by whom it was ever edited. So adopting an automated version control system for your design projects can yield many benefits. It offers a safe workflow. It helps narrow down to a problematic version if you do root uh, cause analysis, for example. It allows, of course, to manage multiple versions. It enables teamwork. It protects your work, of course, in case of, like we mentioned earlier, crashes or uh, anything that might go wrong with your computer. It offers audit trail. You can always go back and see who did when and what. And you have a project history, as we mentioned earlier. So you can understand your, the history of your projects. If you need to find out what change was made, you can always go back to it. And you always, of course, have a backup to go back to or roll back to. All these benefits, though, can be realized only if you're using a true version control system. However, if you're using some sort of folder structure like this one here, which we never recommend, uh, to manage your, your project change over time, you will face many issues because simply you cannot manually manage a complex data such as design projects with a simple system such as folder structure. And some of the obvious issues that are you're going to face if you go this route are uh, lack of oversight, uh, relying on manual revision control with different folders, making a copy to your project and using the save as command, and then maybe readme file and then update the file name, then maybe add it to the commit folder very tedious. Every time you have to remember all these steps. Uh, there is, of course, limited security options, no audit trail, and concurrent work is simply impossible. So how does uh, uh, VCS work? Uh, version control uses a repository, uh, which is a database of changes, and a working copy where you do your work. Your working copy, sometimes called a checkout, is your personal copy of all the files in the project. You make arbitrary edits to the copy without affecting your teammates. And when you're happy with the edits, you commit the changes to the repository. So a repository is a database of all the edits of your project, as well as historical versions. Uh, when you get an out-of-date notification, you can just update your working copy to incorporate any new edits or versions that have been added to the repository since the last time you updated. So what type of uh, uh, VCS exist? Uh, there are typically two types uh, uh, the version of version control systems, centralized and distributed. Distributed version control is more modern, run faster, less prone to errors, and has more features, more features, but also somewhat more complex to understand. You will need to decide whether the extra complexity is worthwhile for you and your team. The main difference between centralized and distributed version is the number of repositories, as we see here. This is an example of a distributed, and this is the example which we'll cover more of today, is the centralized. So it has one repository in terms of centralized and multiple repository for distributed. So 
with the centralized version, each user gets his or own working copy, and uh, but they all commit and update to the same repository. So for, for changes to be seen by your colleagues, for example, you always have to commit, and they'll have to update. This is the traditional version of control systems. In the distributed version control, each user gets their own repository, as well as their own copy that they can work with. And for changes to be seen by others, four things usually have to happen. They have to commit, and they have to push, and then uh, the, the, the colleagues have to pull and then update. So again, you'll have to decide whether this complex scheme makes sense and worthwhile for you and your team. Conflicts. Uh, given that version control allows multiple users to simultaneously work and edit the same project, this can lead sometimes to a situation where a checked local copy is being edited while the same copy has been edited and committed by another designer. So depending on which system you're using, you'd usually, or at least should, have few options to resolve this. You can either commit, which might trigger a subversion error, since committing the local edited version or revision would override the already committed new one by the other designer. You can, or you can update, which will update your local file to the latest version from the repository. However, you'd lose your local changes that you have made. Or you can choose the resolve, and this is probably the safer uh, route, as it will update the files in your working folder to the latest revision, but should let your editor retain the changes you have made, then gives you the option to commit those changes to a new revision. Or you can simply revert, which will uh, bring you back to the base checked out copy and make your, your local copy as out of date that you need to update. In general, it's better to avoid conflict than resolve it later. And some best practices, as we'll see in a bit, would help avoiding the conflicts. So some best practices. Before you commit, always review, uh, either a self-review or a peer review. It's, it's, uh, we cannot stress the importance of doing uh, peer reviews or self-reviews before committing your changes. Make small and frequent commits. Um, small commits are easier to understand and integrate. The longer you wait to integrate your work with the team, the more difficult merging will become. Good communication is always key. Your commit messages are a form of communication. Uh, you're sending messages to your teammate or even to yourself in the future. This is very useful when someone is examining the change because it indicates the purpose of the change. And collaborate and collaborate. A version control system can often merge changes, as we mentioned earlier, from different people that are made simultaneously. However, when two people edit the same design, then there is a conflict that a person must manually resolve, as we mentioned earlier. To avoid this tedious error-prone work, you should strive to avoid conflicts. If you plan to make significant changes to a file that others might be editing, coordinate with them so that one of you can finish the work, have it committed before the other designer gets started. This is simply the best way to avoid conflict. So the question is not whether you use version control system, but which one you should be using. That's a wrap for us. And again, if you found this episode helpful, like it, share it, subscribe to our channel so you never miss out on future episodes. And we'd love to hear your comments. And thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.